Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Success Thursday this week with Zirian Salai. Hey, Zirian, welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Good to be back. So, Zirian, on Thursdays, we talk about success because, of course, if we don't define it, it's kind of hard to achieve. But before we dive into that, we do want to talk about one of the most frequent tools we get out of our toolbox, which is, of course, the retrospective. And we are interested to know what's your favorite retrospective format and why? My favorite one is actually, I don't know what it's called. It's, it's the pizza slices or the spider or whatever, or at least it's, you have these five questions, like what you want to start, what you want to stop, what you want more of, less of. And what was the fifth one? I always forget the fifth one. Um, but but that's, that's actually my favorite retrospective because it, it amplifies like all things that can happen. We focus on negative things. We focus on the positive things. We focus on, and especially more of and less of. Those are very important to me, at least, because that means we acknowledge that we already have stuff, but we want to do it more or we want to have it less. So that, that, that's why it's one of my favorite ones. Absolutely. We'll we'll put the link to one format like that. It's called the Starfish. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, it could be like pizza, pl- pizza slices or the spider web, whatever we want to call it. But uh, we'll put the link on the on the show notes to an example of that. Uh, and uh, one of the aspects of this, of course, it is uh, of this format that you just used or or described is that it it helps us to think holistically, as you said, and. Uh, Coming back to our next question, the success question, we also need to think holistically, right? It's it's very easy to get stuck in helping the team, which is a critical part of our work. But of course, the team exists within the context as well. So uh, let's explore that a little bit, Zirian, and, and uh, share with us, what's your definition of success for yourself as a Scrum Master? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a difficult one, but... I find it successful if I see like a spark in the eyes of the uh, uh, of the organization of the team members, like they, you know, so sometimes you have this special spark in your eyes where you think you can conquer the world, right? And that that's if if I see that spark in the product owner eyes or in the developers eyes or even in manager eyes, that's when I know that I'm successful. So you know when you see the spark. Yeah, <laughs> you've seen it before. You can recognize it. You you intimately know what that feels like. But for those of us listening uh, here on the show, maybe some some of us are getting started. Others, maybe we don't yet are at the level where we can detect that kind of spark. How do you describe that? Let's say you're talking to Luke, our friend, the Scrum Master out there, struggling through his journey, and uh, he wants to understand what you mean by Spark and, and, and how to get ready to start detecting that in the teams that he works with. What would you say to Luke? Yeah, I think, um, maybe it's good if, if I give, a, give an example. Give an example where I saw this behavior matching with the Spark in the ice. Right? I was working with this uh, with the Scrum team and... Um, yeah, every, everything was good. Everything was uh, was well until I had to go on a holiday, and then uh, I, of course, I discussed with the with the with the team. Hey, I'm going on a holiday for three weeks. Who should we ask? Which scrum master should we ask to support you and maybe uh, support you in the sprint retrospectives and things like that? And that was when when they told me, and that's when I saw saw the spark and the behavior that was uh, that was uh, in it, where they said, uh, "Yeah, but Zirian." You've done it so much. We can do it ourselves. We don't need anyone else. And I think that's that's where I notice that hey, there's this spark in the eyes where they feel like they can conquer the world, and there's this action in it where they feel comfortable and confident that they can that they can do stuff. Um, and, and and for 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 Luke, our scrum master, look at look at those behaviors. Look at those patterns. Like, do you see stuff where they um, take things on their own? Like say, yeah, I'm going to talk to the other team, to a developer from the other team. Like, oh wow, okay. Uh, as 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 you and I know, Vasco is most of the, especially starting scrum masters, 
the developers say, hey, um, I have this dependency with the other developer. Uh, can you can you go and, and, and help us out with this impediment? But the moment that you see that the developer tells it themselves, like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to show the courage and be open and go to the other team and uh, ask the developer myself. Yeah, those those are the moments where I think, hmm, yeah, that's quite that's quite successful. Absolutely, uh, and uh, uh, linking back to the Monday episode where we talked about these two different examples of the team setting or needing to set the pace for change. I think it's important here to highlight as well that uh, we should be looking at those behaviors every day and maybe put planting some uh, seeds of those behaviors as we go. Like, hey guys, uh, the retrospective next week, mm, I have to be away. Um, is somebody willing to take the retrospective and facilitate it? I mean, I can help you. We still have quite a few days to get it prepared. I can help you prepare it. And and the team might say, ah, we're not yet confident. That's fine. We'll find another Scrum Master to help you with that, right? Like, And you're always giving that opportunity for the team to step up and say, and if you do that long enough, as we talked about in the Tuesday episode, the modeling episode, right? If you do that long enough, people will see, hey, we should pick this up, yeah. right? Zirian is giving us a message. Maybe they don't even think about it that way, but they'll think, okay, Zirian is think, giving us a message that it's time for us to pick it up. Uh, do I feel comfortable? Yeah, maybe for the retro, I could do it. I don't, I'm not sure about the planning yet, mm, right? Yeah. And, and you're giving them that opportunity to slowly start taking up the ownership. Yeah, yeah. And, and Vasco, did you, uh, did you notice that my definition of success is not whether the team... Uh, is using story points, whether the team is doing stuff which I tell them it is. Um, it's actually, it's good, but the most important thing for me as success is when they come up with solutions, when they come up with, they get the confidence um, to, do, to do stuff themselves. Absolutely. And, and that's really the mark of a successful team because whatever happens, they don't depend on you anymore. No. They can handle it. And and that's where we want the teams to be, of course. Exactly. That's a great example. Thank you for sharing that, Zirian. Yeah, welcome. Part of a successful Scrum Master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real-life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.